Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. We've been discussing welfare economics. We're looking at measuring gains from trade. And the way that we've done that is to isolate the four different groups who can be affected by a market transaction. The buyers, the sellers, the government, and anyone else. We've concentrated so far on the gains from trade to the buyer. And that's got two bits. It's the benefit that the buyer gets from a product, less the amount the buyer pays. In our last presentation, we looked at how to work out the total value to a buyer from different quantities of a product. We've been looking at a consumer called Sarah and her marginal value for apples. Her marginal value of the first apple she receives is $2.00. The marginal value of the second apple, given she's already got a first apple, is $1.20. The marginal value of her third apple, given she's already got two apples, is $1. And the marginal value of her fourth apple, given she's already got three apples, is $0.70. Cents. And we plotted that with quantity on the horizontal axis, dollars on the vertical axis. We plotted Sarah's marginal value curve. We noted that from this marginal value curve, we can work out Sarah's total value, for example, of two apples. How do we do that? Well, we simply look at the area under Sarah's marginal value curve up to the quantity of two apples. So this blue shaded area here, and that is Sarah's total value from receiving two apples. In this particular example, it's $2 plus $1.20, so it's $3.20. So this blue shaded area here, which is exactly equal to $3.20, is Sarah's total value from receiving two apples. While we've got Sarah's total value for any quantity of apples, we're interested in her gains from trade. That's her total value less what she pays for the apples. That's going to give us what's called consumer surplus. Why consumer surplus? Well, because Sarah will be buying apples. She is a consumer. Before we do this exercise on a diagram, though, let's just work through the simple logic. Remember that Sarah's total value from three apples, which I'll call TV, is simply equal to the marginal value of her first apple plus the marginal value of her second apple plus the marginal value of her third apple. So Sarah's total value of three apples in our example here is equal to $2, the marginal value of her first apple, plus $1.20, the marginal value of her second apple, plus $1, which is the marginal value of her third apple, and that's equal to $4.20. So that's the total value of Sarah when she buys three apples. But it's not a consumer surplus. We have to subtract off the amount she pays. Well, how much does she pay for three apples? Well, if Sarah buys three apples and each apple is 90 cents, then her total expenditure is simply three times 90, which is equal to $2.70. So $2.70 is Sarah's expenditure on the three apples. Remember, her total value was $4.20. So Sarah's consumer surplus from three apples is simply equal to her total value of $4.20 minus the amount she pays, and she paid $2.70. And so that gives us Sarah's consumer surplus, $4.20 minus $2.70, is $1.50. So Sarah's gain from buying three apples at 90 cents each, her consumer surplus, is given by $1.50. That's Sarah's gains from that trade. How do we show that on a diagram? Well, let's start off with Sarah's marginal value curve for apples. We can represent her total value from the three apples by this shaded area, which is the area under the marginal value curve up to three apples. Let me quickly shade that in. What about the amount that Sarah pays? Well, here we've put on the 90 cents per apple price of apples. 
So we can represent the amount that Sarah pays by 90 cents times the three apples that she gets at 90 cents each. So by this purple area here, which is just the height is just the price of the apples, and the length is just the quantity of the apples. So this rectangle here is exactly $2.70 in area, which is the same as what we called Sarah's expenditure on three apples. So let's put them together. We are interested in this blue area, which is the total value to Sarah of the three apples, less the purple area, which is the expenditure by Sarah on the three apples. Take the purple area away from the blue area, and that leaves us with this black region, which is Sarah's consumer surplus from three apples, her gains from trade, which as we've already noted, is exactly equal to $1.50. So the black area is Sarah's gains from trade or consumer surplus when she buys three apples at 90 cents per apple. We've now worked out how to find a buyer's gains from trade. It's given by the area under the buyer's marginal value curve for the relevant good, up to the quantity that the person buys, less the amount they pay, which is simply the price they pay times the quantity they buy. So now we've worked out how to find Sarah's consumer surplus, or more generally, any buyer's consumer surplus. As long as we know the price they pay for the product, as long as we have their marginal value curve, or their marginal values, so we can work out total value, and as long as we have the quantity they buy. Oh, that's an awful lot of if-we-haves. In the next presentation, we're going to find a shortcut, a very convenient shortcut, which will allow us to find consumer surplus in a very easy way.